welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. This episode shows how we prepped our window trim. Alright, it's a miserable rainy day, so we're in the garage cutting some trim pieces, and this is what we've got so far. Uh, we looked at there's a product called white wood, which is just a pre-primed lumber of different dimensions, and people use that for their trim a lot because it just takes out a step uh, when you're like painting it and weatherproofing it. Uh, but when we were looking at um, what dimension we would need, because we've got a rain screen uh, that, and the surface of our siding is a fair ways off of the surface of the sheeting, so we need a pretty thick piece of trim. It turns out that two by fours uh, have the right dimension to to get the finish that we want, and we've got a lot of scrap pieces of two by four, so we figured uh, we might as well just use that and uh, just do the the priming and the painting ourselves. So what we've done is just uh, taken pieces of two by four and run them through the table saw at a 15 degree angle to get a piece that looks like that. And the idea is that that angled um, surface is gonna sit against the wall and then we're gonna have a sloped um, surface on the top and on the bottom for, for water to run off of. So water coming down the siding will run down this and even if it trickles down here, this uh, edge is also angled so it'll have sort of a point to drip off of. And then on the sides, we're gonna use two by fours, but we're just gonna run them through a, the straight table saw to uh, narrow them a little bit. Okay, we got two more pieces to do. And I'm just showing you how we got the table saw. Like I said, it's uh, on an angle. And uh, when the piece goes through, it's basically cutting it in half so that both sides are an equal piece, both with that angle on it. And then we're using like one piece for the top trim piece and the other half for the bottom trim piece. Kiva made a chart of all the pieces we're going to need and uh, their lengths and everything and we've been pre-marking and labeling all of our pieces and then checking them off on the chart to make sure that we've uh, got everything we're gonna need. Um, and then also I wanted to mention uh, to get the pieces so uh, even, we did a couple test cuts and then adjusted the fence on the table saw until um, the results were uh, nice and even. So now that we have all of the top and bottom pieces cut for the window trim, I'm just cutting the side pieces and all I'm doing is cutting a 15 degree angle at the top and bottom just with the chop saw and the angle makes it so that it fits up snugly to the angle of the top piece and then after I've cut them I'm just sanding them all down and putting a primer on them. So tell me what you want, what you really really want. Um, I am painting our window trim. Wait. I've already primed it, sanded it, now I'm painting it. Now we're going to put it up and it's going to be so cute. I'm just working on the trim that's going to go around the fenders and we've already cut a bunch of our uh, lumber down at a 15 degree angle on the table saw. So I'm just using that same type of piece. And to get these angles to mate, uh, all I had to do was lay that angle that we've already sliced down, flat down on the chop saw. And to get the 45 degrees, I did a 22 and a half degree cut on each piece to add up to 45. And I mean, the result is a pretty complicated angle on the piece, but because I was just referencing the angle we've already made, it was very simple on the chop saw to just do another angle and uh, it all mates very nicely.
and I'll show you how I uh, got the, the lengths over on the house. So I just took one long piece with, an, with one angled cut and the other end uncut and then a short piece, same thing, with one end that was cut. I laid this against the uh, edge of the fender and laid the other piece against this edge so that they're parallel with these angles. And then I basically just slid them around until the, uh, the angles met, met up. And then kept this in that position. Took my pencil and laid it against this edge to keep it parallel and made a mark. And then because this is tight against here and I want to have a little bit of a gap, I basically just added a quarter inch to that mark so that the whole thing will sit up and this piece will sit out and this piece will sit out just a little bit so that it's not uh, wood on metal right here. Somehow we messed up with the list of cuts we needed for the trim pieces for the windows. Um, most of the pieces were too long. Somehow we didn't end up trimming off what we were supposed to. Uh, so we've gone back through after priming them all and had to slice off um, most of them. Um, but it's not too bad because it's just one face we'll have to reprime. Uh, but we also needed to uh, make pieces for the door. So we've done that. Uh, this set is for the hot water tank uh, grill that's going to be on the outside. This is for the furnace. Uh, and then these are the fender trim pieces that I was working on. So we're trying to get be really thorough now and make sure we have every single piece because we need to have all the trim pieces on before we can put the siding on, which we're really pushing for now. Um, so the only things left are, um, there's going to be a, an air exchanging system that's going to need a uh, grill or a vent of some kind that we'll want to put trim around, as well as possibly a bathroom exhaust uh, grill as well but we're not 100% positive on the sizes of those so those are probably the last things that we put on but this is pretty much everything uh, so now we're just finalizing these finishing the priming we put one coat of paint on uh, and then we'll start putting them up uh, and then the final coat will be to cover the, uh, the screw holes and everything to make uh, the final finish look We're still going through all the little spots where we might need some trim before we finish the priming and get onto painting and putting it up and, and so on. And so we're trying to figure out how we're going to complete the box. And we're not going to have any rain screen, so the amount that the siding uh, is stood off of the surface is different. So um, rather than a large corner piece, which we'll probably end up using on the corners of the house. I've just taken a 2x2 two two, uh, and run it through the table saw with the guard off and this blade uh, only a half an inch above the table and I ran it through um, on two sides to make a channel and then I cut the end at 15 degrees to kind of match this sort of mini fascia that we've, we've made and so this is going to go tight on the corner like this and then it snugs up fairly well into the, uh, the sort of sloped fascia there. And so that's, that's, that's what that's gonna look like. And uh, the siding is gonna come up and it's 5 eighths thick. And I've got, uh, I think an inch or so here. So this will still be um, protruding more than the siding. And so it'll have a similar look to everything else. And uh, I think it's gonna work out. And then we've also got um, the trim piece that's gonna go over top of the box is there. And then I cut a couple of other uh, dimensions of angled pieces to make a uh, sort of system that looks like that uh, so that there'll be trim all the way around and I think we're gonna put the, some siding on this first and then complete the trim around here and then put the house of siding up against that 
it's kind of a situation where we're just figuring it out as we go. It's actually kind of hard to look ahead and, and know exactly how it's going to go, but just piece by piece we're kind of putting the puzzle together and uh, getting all the, the pieces ready. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles and subscribe if you want to follow our progress.